Doc, what do I do? You used to run black ops, been involved in all sorts of uh, regime changes. I know you're confident we're beating them, but right now they are uh, blowing the living hell out of my, op my operation financially. I've talked to lawyers. They say we've got serious lawsuits, but I don't love lawsuits, but I guess I've got to do it. Uh, Dr. Pachinik, I mean, what do you make of all this? This is just outrageous how he's a Russian spy. They're spying on him. Uh, all this is going on, and now Google won't take our ads. Uh, it's happened to Stone. Stone didn't get to that yet. I mean, they've called for this purge. The president needs to come out and say, you back off, Google and others, or we're going to slap you with antitrust. Google's already had a trust under Obama. I am sick of these people like Zuckerberg and Schmidt believing I don't have free speech, trying to ruin, mm -hmm. uh, you know, America and have one-sided deals. But look at TPP was meant to screw over the average right. American business person. Uh, so, Dr. Pachinik, quick comment on that, and then I want to let you guys take over. For the most part, uh, you have been the voice, Roger's the voice, but in many ways, this is a reflection of what happened during the Nixon administration, where everybody called him crazy or anti-Semitic, none of which was true. When Google plays with you and, and decides to interfere with your business, that is major impediment of commerce. Google knows that, that's going to stop. The hidden government, remember what I said a long time ago. We have a division within the so-called hidden government. I can assure you that Roger Stone, Alex Jones, is seen very favorably by those who I work with. Does it mean I'm being surveyed and I've been, you know, monitored since? I said yes, because there's no problem when I'm being monitored and I feel comfortable with the people whom I deal with. Now, for 30 years, uh, both the CIA and military intelligence has been concerned about our country. Now what we have is a backlash from those in the CIA and elsewhere who feel that they've been taken advantage of, they've been co-opted, and correctly, we counter coup with people who were loyal to you, Alex, loyal to Roger Stone, and understood both the Nixon and Reagan administration. So what you're seeing now within the deep-seated community or the so-called secret government is an internal fight that I've been telling you about for 15 to 20 years, but it's come out to the forefront. And you predicted, so I'm asking you, I know it's top people and, and Obama left behinds that are doing it. They're in open rebellion. Uh, Tillerson's trying to clear them out. I know we've got good people. That's why Maxine Waters is so pissed calling them scum bags because they know they're starting to lose. I'm just telling you, I'm the president just for himself and everybody else, they're waging war against his kids, his businesses. I'm not looking for authoritarianism, but we're getting attacked. It's time to punch back against these assholes. I'm sorry. I'm going to let you guys take Here's over. But the ultimate irony. Alex, if you go to the ACLU, and I think this is exactly what you should do, and ask the ACLU to protect you vis-a-vis -vis Google and Amazon and anybody on the Internet, and then file a suit for violation of the First Amendment, Second Amendment, any amendment, and the impediment to do business, let's see what happens. In other words, Let's not get upset about the left. Let's use it. ACLU should be prepared to defend you and anyone else on the political side. Sure, I agree, and we're going to do that. But let me ask you this. It seems like a super bold mood. It, 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 from talking to your big sources, I've got some high-level ones as well. I, our, I mean, I think we're winning right now, restoring the republic. But, I mean, how serious is the civil war in the deep state? Where is it going? I'm going to turn this over to Roger Stone uh, and, of course, uh, McAdoo and uh, the other crew members. Go ahead. Well, Roger is aware of something like this because it happened within Nixon. From my perspective, Roger knew Nixon far better than I, but I knew one thing. When, he, when Nixon was attacked by the by a Washington Post, by the so-called uh, Bernstein and Woodward team, what was not brought out to the forefront, and I had to bring it out subsequently, and I said it to Eagleberg at the time, was Woodward was not just simply a reporter, he had been part of naval intelligence. And the person he briefed in the Nixon administration and who briefed him in return was a man called Alexander Haig, or Colonel Haig at the time. So what you had, even at that point in time, in the 60s and 70s, is that Nixon was pinpointed by intelligence. The CIA was not a friend of Nixon's. Nixon knew that very well. Nixon had very much the same traits that Trump did. Self-made man, a man who did not trust the establishment, did not like the Yaleys, did not like the Harvards, the Princetons, and all that nonsense. But he was at the mercy of Henry Kissinger and others who went to Harvard and Yale. He was called an anti-Semite. If it wasn't for Nixon, the state of Israel wouldn't be here today. Roger knows this better than I do, that literally Nixon gave 
uh, gold in my ear, all the planes she needed in the Six-Day War. Literally, our pilots flew into El Tel Aviv, the IDF took it over, and they just went on to win the war. So what we have now is a recapitulation of what we had in the Nixon administration, a little bit of what we had in the Reagan administration, but this is very much what a revolution looks like in the 21st century. You happen to be the person that they can pick off most readily because you're in the press. They can mock you, they can laugh you, but the old saying goes, don't forget my name and you can knock me in as many times as you want because your brand will continue to go up. When I read that article in the New York Times that you had five to 10 to 18 million listeners worldwide, I would like to see the compilation of all the newspapers and see what their subscription is. It doesn't come one tenth to your subscription rate. So the, you will have support. You will not only have support from people like myself, you have support within the so-called deep government. So does Roger. The reason for that is the deep government need an access point in order to get to the right in order to go to the center. This was not something I made up. This was not something Nixon made up. It was an old strategy that we would come in from the right in order to get to the middle. Roger knew about it, Nixon knew about it, and it went on and on and Kissinger knew about it. So what we have right now is an internal fight going on. What Maxine Waters says is not relevant. Nancy Pelosi's not relevant. Most of the people you hear on the radio and television coming from Congress are totally irrelevant. It's the ones you don't hear from, the ones who are quiet and silent and basically control the uh, purse strings. Those are the ones that Trump has the closest relationship to because you have to remember that McConnell's wife, Madam Cho, is a part of the uh, administration. You also have to remember that we have now three military officers who will contain and constrain the administration in such a way that there will be no attempt for a counter coup. That's why the civilian intelligence in the CIA and elsewhere is very frightened. This is the first time we have had military officers, distinguished military officers, who have come to the forefront and said, you know what, I'm serving the administration not to get one more grade because they're all generals. It's not to get more money because they don't need it, but to save the Republic and to make sure that we do not go to unnecessary wars and we no longer deplete our uh, money source into irrelevant activities like war and other overseas activities that Obama did. Right now, fortunately, we're bringing back 4,000 of our troops in the National Guard from Djibouti. Did anyone in the Obama administration say to anyone in the United States that we had soldiers in Africa fighting in Somalia, Sudan, Ethiopia, and elsewhere? No. What happened was that Obama, as always, he kept it quiet, he was cryptic and devious, yet no one has picked it up from the New York Times because they're afraid to talk about those kind of episodes. No one talked about the fact that we went into Libya without any preparation. It was the CIA, Panetta, and a whole group of others, and our own soldiers did not approve of that. Mm. The issue was that we had an offline uh, situation in Libya, uh, the ambassador had other issues at hand, and unfortunately, the episode S occurred. Steve, but that Steve. Was, I'm sorry, Steve, Steve, let me uh, let me uh, jump in here, if I may. First of all, uh, you are absolutely right uh, about what happened under the agency, uh, because of course I was there. You and I have compared notes. We come away with the same impression. This is a very key point. I recommend a book called. Silent Coup by Leonard Kolodny, now out yes. again uh, publicly, which reveals that Bob Woodward has a long relationship with naval intelligence, that it is actually Bill Sullivan uh, who, uh, who is uh, talking to him through, uh, through uh, the entire Watergate affair and how he has suppressed this. I have a monograph coming out shortly, 5,000 words, entitled the many lies of Robert Woodward, or Bob Woodward, pardon me, which right. you'll be able to get uh, online. Um, it is extraordinary uh, uh, that, the, uh, that the division that Steve describes in the agency is absolutely true. Here are the problems, though. Those who support liberty and freedom and the Alex Jones, Roger Stone, libertarian right agenda of freedom and civil liberties uh, are the grunts, the agents, the people at the middle and lower levels. The leadership 
is still an Obama appointed clique of elitists, Ivy Leaguers, One Worlders, globalists. In the case of uh, uh, former Director Brennan, an active communist uh, in the uh, U.S. Communist Party politics of Gus Hall. Uh, so, uh, and a man with an obvious weakness for um, it, radical Islam uh, and uh, Wahhabism. Uh, so that's where the leaking is happening. That is where the plan to take out Donald Trump uh, is being executed. Uh, and the president has to be aware of, of how deep the hatred goes. They are leaking on General Flynn. They are leaking about the FISA court uh, warrant against yours truly to uh, monitor, Steve, every conversation you and I have had. The little men in the trailers have their, their, uh, their uh, headphones going. It's like, the, it's like a movie. It's so ridiculous. I'm sure it is somewhat more sophisticated these days. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, this is I, incredible. I, I feel like I, this is incredible for me to be sandwiched in between the two of you guys getting all of this back knowledge. And I, uh, when we come out, back from the break, I mean, Millie and I are kind of sitting here and just sort of young in the game. To us, this is unprecedented watching the media and everyone calling our president Hitler and the movie theaters around the country are going to be showing 1984 to protest the president as if that's not the ultimate double speak that we were warned about in 1984. And we're kind of wondering, are they going to succeed? Will they succeed in this coup and taking out the president? I mean, they are full steam ahead, all cylinders firing, trying to uh, convince the nation that he is the ultimate embodiment of Hitler, Hitler reborn. And no. we just want to know, is he going to be successful? We're going to go ahead and just skip this break because I feel like this is too important, the information that we're getting right now from Roger Stone and Steve yes. Buchanan. I just want to know, do you guys, what can you tell those of us out here? This is sort of the first time we're really ex activated and loving what's going on in this country. And now we're just shocked to see people like Bill Crystal or come out and say, you know, we believe in democracy, but I'd rather have a deep state than uh, a President Bill Trump. Chris I know Bill Crystal. Bill Crystal is one of those Jewish neocons who is basically what we call a chicken hawk. A chicken hawk is somebody who can espouse all kinds of wars, but has personally made sure he never went into the draft. He is such a draft dodger, along with all the other neocons, Pearl, Wolfowitz, Salmik Alazad, Hadley, that they have already been denigrated in terms of our part of the deep a republic. Uh, Crystal has no idea what he's talking about. He's just a, well, a mouthpiece but, 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 for let Obama. Let me jump in here, okay. if I may, because uh, uh, I have a very friendly relationship with Bill. He's actually okay. a very pleasant chap. Now, he voted for Hubert Humphrey. Uh, he, he comes from <laughs> a long line of liberal Democrats. Uh, he, he, he seems to share the same foreign policy view of John McCain and uh, his mini-me sidekick, sick sidekick, Lindsey Graham, which is send troops first, ask questions later. Uh, but uh, that said, uh, we're in a very dangerous uh, time here because uh, you have this rogue element. They know that if the president cleans house at the agency, which is what they fear, uh, and uh, at this juncture, they're well aware that the only person in the building loyal to the chain of command of the president is the director. No one has been hired below him yet. These people are all Obama uh, holdovers leaking like a sieve. Uh, and much, much information is not filtering down to the second and third level agents and men and women who work conscientiously to protect their country. The same thing is true of the FBI. The leadership is heavily politicized and has their own agenda. The rank and file agents, the men and women protecting us are patriotic Americans and they don't know everything. I agree with you. But here is one of the issues that is far more important that I've seen over the years, and so is the military. The CIA has recruited about 60 to 70 percent of the internal staff has been outsourced, either through Booz Allen. And you can see this with Edward Snowden. Snowden ostensibly came out of special forces. He broke his leg or whatever the nonsense story was. He came into the CIA, recruited by the CIA, then left the CIA, but came back as a contract player. The reason they do this in the CIA, why the CIA is bloated, 
highly expensive and is not completely loyal to the United States is very simple. They do not work directly for the CIA or the United States government. They usually work for an outsourcing uh, contractor. For the most part, Booz Allen, L3, or any one of the other Blackwater associations. The military works specifically for the military. We have no outsourcing going on other than those that are given to civilians or people who want to protect the State Department. When Trump came in, there was a very clear message. We will decrease the size of the CIA, we will decrease the size of the State Department, and we will not spare anyone. I, I understand what you're saying about Bill Crystal. I've never had that attitude toward him. I find him quite despicable, as I do most of the neo <laughs> well, I just I find his politics despicable. Hmm. Well, I uh, find him As usually. an American citizen who was basically to called a lazy American and that shouldn't we be happy to be replaced with the new uh, illegal immigrants coming in the country, I find that remark by him despicable. And to just put it out there that that's the plan of the globalists to replace all of us lazy Americans and people who actually want to fight for this country and believe in liberty and freedom and, and, and actually give a crap about the Constitution. Let me tell you one thing. The notion of globalism is dying on the vine. I said it years ago, and I'm saying it again. Brexit came out of the Trump movement. Another major movement that initiated the European Union was France. And what is happening to France? They've been occupied by Muslims. The immigration issue is so grand that Madame Le Pen from the extreme right will probably be the next president of France. She will then initiate Article 50 to withdraw from the EU. Once France withdraws from the EU, Germany will then have to deal with Greece, Italy, Spain, and you've got a basket case. Mm. So in fact, what's happened is globalism is dying on the vine. Don't give them more credit than they need. They're falling apart. Mm. That's why Putin can come in and try to help them out. But Putin is in financial trouble. China is in financial trouble. The only country which is not in financial trouble is the United States. Mm. We have now gone to the IMF, thanks to Mnuchin, and basically said to Legon and to the director of the IMF and the World Bank, realign your currency rates so that the dollar reflects correctly how we can do trade and don't artificially pump us up so that we cannot do trade. So Trump is working on many, many different levels. Unfortunately, that's not brought out. And most people in the New York Times have no idea what we're talking about. Right. That's why Alex Jones, that's why Roger, that's why you ladies are extremely important to what's happening. Mm, this what is a revolution. Right. We and what you just said about France is really key because we reported about how George Soros and these other groups are actually now working with uh, Internet giants to be able to stop what happened here in the United States with the uh, unprecedented election with, of Donald Trump. They want to stop that from happening in France. So they're already trying to uh, stop access to information. And InfoWars is the place where people, French citizens, can come here and get accurate information about what's going on in their country. Or Swedish citizens, of course, because it's uh, they're silenced in their own country. Exactly. And, you know, I have a question for you guys because we've seen how, you know, the mainstream media has done a really good job getting everybody so caught up on these other issues and, mm -hmm. and the whole Trump having to defend himself over these Russian allegations. Yet, you know, we kind of have lost, lost track of going after Hillary and really putting her behind the bars. If anybody should be being, you know, investigated or a judge allowing them to spy on. It would be Hillary Clinton, right. not somebody like Roger Stone, oh, right. who hasn't really done anything to warrant that type of a uh, an invasion on their privacy. But this is my question. What do you guys think about um, the potential coup that we could be seeing on, you know, Donald Trump at this time? And, and what do you think about, you know, Flynn and the timeliness of his resignation Juxtaposed with now Infowars being attacked and Milo Yiannopoulos being, uh, you know, having to be kind of resigned from Breitbart. What do you think about all of this happening all at once? And and what kind of vulnerability does that uh, does that, that make? Is like, is that, yeah. What an excellent question! I can't believe you just asked that. Oh, Millie Weaver with the just the one-two punch there. <laughs> we actually are about to go to break here in about 30 seconds. I know Paul Joseph Watson is going to be. Uh, joining us on the flip side. I'm not sure if you guys can stick around to answer that question or if we'll have Paul right away. Um, sure. Anyone else who, if you want to continue on with this conversation, infowars.com forward slash show.